Hello, everybody. This is the Chocolate News Podcast. I'm your co-host, John Alexander Reese. And I'm your co-host, Morgan Angelique Owens. And if you didn't know, the Cincinnati Herald has been around since 1955 and is the leading African-American-owned newspaper in the greater Cincinnati area and northern Kentucky area. And today we have with us our digital correspondent, Andrea Carter. How's it going, Andrea? Fine. How is everyone today? Ooh, just uh, so, hot. so hot. Hot. Oh. hot. hot. <laughs> I, I know, it was just so hot. I'm just happy that it, my car sits in a garage and I have to sit out on the street because it's just hot. too hot. Ooh. I'm just it's happy I'm not wearing a wig. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Ooh, that's true. <laughs> but you know what I have to break out? The um, That thing that you put across your windshield when I'm out and about now, I have to make sure I have that up in my um, front window so I can lessen the heat, the sun coming bearing into the car because, you know, I got leather seats and skin and leather do not mix when it's hot. They yeah. sure, they sure don't. All right. So, Andrea, what is the chocolate news of the week? Well, it has been a hot, 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 and I don't mean the weather, hot <laughs> news week um, this week because the January 6th hearing got jumped off and oh my I mean I think they had a Super Bowl size audience Monday night and it's unbelievable um but we're gonna get to that in just a second I'm gonna start off with what Governor DeWine did this week he signed um a bill into law allowing teachers to be armed in the schools in the bill it allows the school district to decide um if they want to have specific staff members armed or if they want to mandate all the teachers to be armed. Teachers don't have a, have a lot of training. Um, several proponents of this believe that you're bringing extra harm into the school because now everyone's going to be twitchy. Um, you know, people who are emotional and have an armed, have, may have a gun on them, might want to use it. Um, that puts kids in peril. It's just all kinds of things that can happen with bringing guns into schools. So when I lived in Texas, I believe they had a sign up. Entities could decide if you could allow to be in or with a gun or not. And I know for a fact, some churches had no guns allowed and some schools had no guns allowed. So I'm, it's going to be interesting to see what each school district does. Speaking of that, Cincinnati Public Schools took the time and voted that they will not be um, allowing armed teachers into the school building. So um, they did that just hours after Governor DeWine signed House Bill 99. They believe that, you know, they don't want their teachers to be armed. They want, they believe they can protect the children from anything that may happen. Knock on wood so far, nothing has happened with Cincinnati Public School Systems, and we don't want anyone thinking about our copy, copycatting it. Then again, it is summertime, schools are closed. So we'll have to see what happens in the fall when the school buildings reopen. So right now it's going to be touch and go and see what happens, which is unfortunate. But speaking of arms and guns and violence, the January 6th hearing has jumped off, like I said earlier, with a bang. And they have hit the ground running, revealing information about uh, former President Trump, um, his aides around him, the people who were involved with the January 6th, and they have left no stone unturned with video depositions, personal testimony, and they uh, really found out that January 6th planning of the Capitol attacks was coordinated, and it went to the highest levels you could, you wouldn't want to believe regarding our government. They had a primetime public hearing on Monday. They're going to have one. Um, they had one. They were supposed to have one today, and they didn't. But they will have one on Thursday um, at 1 o'clock. And that's going to be interesting because they're going to focus on the pressure campaign that the president and his minions did on um, then Vice President Mike Pence. Um, I think one of the other things that came out of the information that has been revealed is that Donald Trump detached himself from reality. He would not accept the fact that he lost the election. He would just, every single time he came up with a different scenario or he wanted people to overturn it, people kept telling him, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. 
And um, an interesting note, Liz Cheney, if you go on her Twitter page, she has released a snippet of video um, deposition um, that is going to be revealed tomorrow of where one DOJ, I believe it was a DOJ aide, told Donald Trump, or at least his, one of his aides, that if he continues to persist this, that he's going to need a criminal lawyer. So they're really setting up a case for um, criminal charges that possibly could be brought against several people, including possibly the former president, but we'll have to say. But enough about bad. Let's go to good. Yes, How many totally. saw the Tony Awards the other night, Sunday night? You know, I watched a couple of highlights on YouTube, and I got to say, they were it was quite a show. It was quite it, a show. It, 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 from the opening number to the last number, um, it was hopping. It was praiseworthy. The performances were outstanding. In fact, I want to now see the musical Six because of that performance. It's the female version of what Hamilton did to history. And this is about the six wives of Henry VIII. So, and all of them but one lost their head. So it's going to be very interesting to see what this musical is all about. But A Strange Loop won the for Best New Musical, which is outstanding because it is a Broadway show about a gay man thinking about writing a play. And it's, it's a strange loop of seeing this process go on about what he wants to write about and being gay and what his experiences have been and everything. And it was um, the guy who plays MJ in the pop musical, MJ won best performance. Um, Felicia was shot. I really want to see that. Oh, I do want to see that. That was impressive. Um, a Felicia Rashad won her second Tony for a skeleton crew. And for um, Jennifer Hudson, became the 17th person to now have won an Emmy, a Tony, an Oscar, a missing one. An Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. Yeah. I was missing the Grammy. So she is the 17th person and the only second Black person to do that feat. And the reason why she got it is because she's a producer of Strange Loop. So when Strange Loop won, for best new perform best new musical, she got the the M, she got the Tony for that because she's a producer. So that's how she got that fee. That's like that's like the most exclusive club to get into if you're yes. like in the entertainment I mean, world. <laughs> it's it's unreal. Number one to be that talented or at least be attached to a project that gets you there is unbelievable. But she's the only second black person to do that and the first per- who who was the first black person to do that i i, I want to say Whoopi goldberg yes Whoopi. that's it no, those no, are the, no. both black women no, are no. the only ones to do that is that unbelievable i know it's amazing it is amazing but i i do recommend um everyone if you have a chance to go to get to new york go to broadway pick a musical it's very diverse they, they are seeing shows opening and closing and they're getting the audience. They're, you know, they're making some bucks, but also there's more creativity being shown on the stage. And um, they also honored, um, by the way, as a little side note, they honored Lena Horn on Broadway by naming a theater after her. Oh, Wow. And so, and I believe she's the first Black woman to have a Broadway theater named after her. So, you know, that that is a supreme honor to have that. So that's another thing that has been done this week in um, terms of honoring the Tonys. And I'm going to end the chocolate news real quick. The Bengals are going to welcome fans to Paul Brown Stadium on July 31st for a Back Together Saturday training camp event. So if you want to see what your Bengals are up to, get down there. The gates open at 2 p.m. The players and the coaches will take the field shortly after 2.30 p.m. Practice will begin at 3. And it's a chance to see your Bengals play, you know, start getting that fandom worked up, wear the the Bengals stuff if you want to. Um, You know, I'll be pulling out something on that day. Um, and, you know, just get ready to see what your Bengals will do this year. We have high hopes and I'm, I'm hoping for the best. Thank you so much, Andrea. So now we'll switch it over to Morgan Angelique Owens, where she will align us with some beauty, lifestyle and culture. So take it away, Morgan. All right. Thank you, John. 
So I am super excited for my guest today because first of all, I was a fangirl before I even met her. And so I'm going to let you guys know how I met her. So she was speaking at a conference and when I saw her, I was like, oh my God, she, she's here. She's amazing. I want to be just like her. She's such a boss. And then I found out she was an AKA and then it took every fiber in my being to even go up and talk to her. And I think I may have gave, gave you a book. I'm not sure if I had my book out yet. I don't know how I was trying to just to get in there. And you didn't know who I was, but you knew who my dad was. So I'm like, oh, okay. Odell again for the win. Yes. Thank you, dad. So, um, and we've just been connecting ever since, ever since then. So welcome Sonia Jackson Miles, the Sonia Jackson Miles. Oh, uh, I love you and appreciate you so much. And I knew who you were. Don't even try it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, it was like the very beginning. Like I was, no, I didn't even think I had the book. It was just curvy cardio at that, at that point. So yeah, so, yeah. A absolutely. And I think that, I don't know if your dad had mentioned something about the work that I was doing because he came to a salon that mm -hmm. I hosted at my home. And so, yes, it was, it's all good stuff. We're all family. That's right. Time flies too. Boy, that was so long ago. Yeah. But um, I'm super excited to have you on here. And so tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. So uh, again, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Sonia Jackson Miles and I am the founder and CEO of the Sister Accord, both the foundation and the LLC. I'm on a mission to have a billion girls and women learn how to love themselves and each other. Now, why do I use the term learn? Because we're socialized as little girls to not like ourselves and to not like each other. And I wanted to be a disruptor to that way of thinking. And so I uh, had started my career at Ford Motor Company, then went to the Gillette Company, and then Procter & Gamble acquired Gillette. And I led part of that integration of Gillette into P&G, and then uh, led designing their global media sourcing organization. And that's what brought me to Cincinnati. And so having the opportunity to work for this, um, these amazing companies uh, was just such a wonderful, wonderful experience. But I saw women in the workplace not supporting each other, not lifting each other up. And I wanted to use my voice and experience to change that narrative because we can go farther, faster together. I love that because that's so true. You know, you know, I work with young girls too and, you know, trying to help them find their sparkle. And it's so tough for them to even say words that they love about themselves. They're always going to the negative words. And so yeah, that's it, right. It's the whole village because because what do uh, mean girls grow up to be? Mean women. And that's not cute, right? <laughs> So everyone loves that. You know, when I first started talking about this and, and going on this journey of women's empowerment and girls empowerment, I was, a I was, you know, just kind of out there by myself. It was a lonely yeah. place. Yeah. And so now a lot of people are talking about it. But when I said mean girls grow up to be mean women, if there is no intervention, the sister accord is the intervention. Right. People were like, oh my gosh, that is so true. And so we wanted to make sure that people understood the essence and core of this organization so that they, they could enroll in it and be a part of what we're doing. Yes, because there's been so many times when, you know, like I said, I was a fangirl with you and you are, you are truly who you are in person, offline and online. So thank you for that. But I've met women that I've looked up to for years and met them in person and they were just horrible or, you know, they, you know, they ignore me or, you know, and it's just really disheartening. It is so disheartening. It's so disheartening. And we have to melt away all of that stuff that you're not, you know, popular enough, or you're not in this group, or you're not in that clique. We have to just take all of that off the table because we all are important. We all must value each other. And that is what we, we focus on, leadership development and, and just making sure that we can have healthy interactions and relationships among girls and women. Yes. Now, do you still do um, your tea now that, you know, the pandemic has just like changed everything? So yeah, I flew to Chicago for one day. I came from Vegas. Good. 
And yeah. I flew in one day to Chicago to go to this tea and yeah. it was amazing. So what are the plans for the sister court tea going forward now that things are like opening back up? Well, guess what? You, and, and this happens to us, right? We have our businesses where there are things are going great and then something happens to disrupt it. Right. And then we start freaking out and saying, oh Lord, what are we going to do? <laughs> when in fact, all we need to do is continue to move forward and provide these amazing opportunities for people to come and, and be inspired uh, to love. And so what I was, you know, in that bag of, oh, COVID is here. I'm going to have to just shut down. Yeah. And then I got to the place where I said, no, wait a minute. We can take the core and essence of what we've been doing in person and translate that into what it looks like virtually. And guess what? Now we've had people all over the world. So, you know, historically people would come to a city. We've had 24 tea parties. People would come to a particular city or they come to Cincinnati. Now we have people all over the world joining. So we've expanded the audience around the, the leadership development celebration of sisterhood. And it's just been amazing. We uh, launched in Zimbabwe because if I'm going to get to a billion girls and women, I have to make sure that Africa and Asia is part of that. Yeah. And so it was, uh, it was really an awesome thing to be able to switch to virtual for the past couple of years. I love it. Thank so you. fast forwarding to now, I know you, you just released a song. <laughs> <laughs> So I tell you, I, I was so heartbroken June 10th of 2019 when my mother transitioned and as I said, went to heaven and um, I was having one of those days and was writing in my journal and I wrote a song as I was writing in the depths of my grief when I closed my eyes and, and I just wanted to inspire myself to keep moving forward and to learn how to embrace her spirit and to recognize her spirit in all these different things in all these different ways. And so I reached out to a, a producer, Paul Randolph in Michigan, and he loved what I was doing. I wanted to have this song in honor of my mother and all of the people who've lost We've had over a million people pass away from COVID in the States, over 6.3 million globally, mm. you know, domestic violence, violence in general. And so I wanted this song to represent how we would remember our loved ones and celebrate their lives and memories. And so when I closed my eyes, launched last Friday on the third anniversary of my mother um, transitioning, and then we announced three additional $5,000 scholarships for three young ladies for the Nella D. Jackson Memorial Scholarship. So we're giving away uh, funds to support people in their education, as well as launch the song last Friday. So we were really busy last Friday. <laughs> yeah. So where can people find all, all your information? If they want to do the sister chord, if they want to get the song, how, how do they find you? So now we are, When I Close My Eyes, featuring Paul Randolph, is on Apple Music and iTunes, and it's going to be eventually on all platforms, all streaming platforms, but today you can uh, download via iTunes or Apple Music my social media, The Sister Accord, for Instagram and Twitter, so it's The, T-H-E, Sister Accord, is A-C-C-O-R-D, is in dog. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Sonia Jackson Miles and it's S-O-N-I-A and Miles is M-Y-L-E-S. And so people can reach out uh, and inquire. We have Sister Accord Day. This is our ninth anniversary coming up on August 31st. And you know, we always have amazing music uh, at these events. So we're working on something very special and that will be in Cincinnati and it will be in person and virtual this year. So I always like to ask my guests, what are three beauty products you can't live without right now? Oh, wow. <laughs> so I, I tell you, it's really interesting. Um, my girlfriend, my best friend since first grade uh, gave me some lipstick from the lip bar Yes. for Christmas. 
And wow, I am really enjoying it. I love the way it looks. And so that is one thing that I'm using. I am using um, Sylvia Brownlee has this ball, this yeah. cryo ball. I yeah. use the ball every single morning. I am yeah. loving, 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 loving um, her, her products. And then I uh, have been using, it's interesting, my skin just all of a sudden changed. Uh, and I, it was so dry. And yeah. I started using uh, True Shea. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been using that every day. And boy, my skin feels so good. I'm hugging myself and loving um, on myself over here. <laughs> I love it. Shout out to all the small business owners yes. too. That's great. We love, we love to see it. Love well, it. I could just talk to you all day, but I can't. So um, again, please tell everyone where they can find you, how they can support you one more time. Yeah. So, and let me give those websites. Uh, the sister accord foundation.org is uh, one of our um, websites. And then the sister accord.com. You can shop all things sister accord. Uh, I have Sonia Jackson miles.com. You'll hear a lot of my interviews on that uh, website. And then dreamwalkingcourse.com is my executive coaching and, and, and coaching program. Uh, as well. So those are my websites. And again, people can reach me on Twitter, Instagram, the sister accord and uh, LinkedIn as well. All right. Well, once again, thank you for always pouring into me. Thank you for always loving me. I yeah. know we had this conversation before about me not wanting to ask for help, but this year I'm asking for help. So I will be, yeah. I will be hitting you up. <laughs> thank you. Please do. Yes. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to serve you. Yes. So oh. thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. John, back to you. Thanks, Morgan. That was a, uh, that was a very fascinating conversation. Um, well, that's it for today's show, everyone. Um, I want to thank Andrea for coming on and discussing all the chocolate news. Thank you so much, Andrea. Oh, it's my pleasure. And we'll just see what I bring to you next week. And you can find out more information about today's topics and past podcast episodes at www.thesensineherald.com, the SESH newsletter, or on our social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And make sure to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast app. Our podcast is on Apple, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Amazon, YouTube, and Google Podcasts. I'm John Alexander-Reese. And I'm Morgan Angelique Owens. And have a good day.